Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Colin, and this is Colin and Beth Vlogs. Now, this is a video about veganism, so if this... Hold on. Before you get into the comments and start being warriors here, there's not many videos that we're going to be doing about veganism, because quite frankly, honestly, I got it. You don't want to hear it. I was a meat eater once before, and I will never touch it again. And uh, for multiple reasons, but that is another video for another day. And these are the eight things that I wish I knew, we knew, before going vegan. And our whole family is vegan. And no, they're not dying. We just tie strings around our kids so they don't float away. So right now, here's eight things that I wish I knew before going vegan. Number one is reading the labels. Why? Because dairy likes to be snuck in there every single time as a modified ingredient. I wonder why that is. Subsidy, I wonder. When we first started going vegan, we had to read every label and we found out, holy crap, there's milk ingredients in my favorite chips, which happen to be salt and vinegar. Go figure. They also like to put it in ketchup chips. Go figure. However, not every brand. So that was a good thing. I had to I had to settle for the no-name brand, but I make do. Number two, calcium is responsible for your bones and all that other good stuff. And so is magnesium and magnesium and all that other good stuff. However, calcium really, well, where are we going to get it? Because we're not getting the dairy product because it's not being snuck into all of our other foods. We, we downloaded an app called Chronometer. It kind of helped us a lot of the way. You know, it showed us where our proteins were coming from. It showed us where the calcium was coming from and every other nutrient that we had that was necessary. There's a lot. We had to learn a lot. That's coming up, by the way. So we found out that kale was the champ. It was insane. What scared me was I've always seen videos of broccoli being pinned up against milk. Why? Because broccoli has the lower amount. Kale has the higher amount, so kale and put it against milk. And pin the two against and said, hey, look at this versus this. I wonder how that would have turned out if it was kale versus milk. Kind of like the smoking situation, isn't it? Let's take athletes, give them cigarettes and say, hey, look, it doesn't affect your health at all. Years later, we find out, oops, number three. Shopping as a vegan. Before you get your knickers in a twist and be like, ah, it's so expensive. On the contrary, it's actually pretty cheap. We shop for price points, that's it. That is said, shopping has become a lot easier, a lot more cheaper, uh, faster for that matter. Uh, we just shop in the one aisle, which is fantastic. We go in, we get all of our fruits and vegetables and tofu's all right there. We don't need to go down process wonderland and mystery items. I if you find this at all intriguing or at least entertaining or at some sort, you know, informational, like, watch the little button below, ready for this? Subscribe. Oh, it's rainbow colored. Cooking. Cooking has become better. It's become fun. It's become creative in the kitchen. It's how you say, je ne sais quoi. I don't know if that's the right word, but it sounded good. So. Cooking, it's insane how colorful our foods have become. We're cooking our same meals that I love the most, like chef's pie. Um, I can turn bread into bacon, kind of, sort of, in a really unhealthy way. But it's still once in a blue moon. I can still make stuffing. I can make everything the same and taste the same. It boils down to spices. Textured vegetable proteins, we found that out. That was phenomenal. Was it 52 grams of protein per 100 grams? blows my mind nutritional yeast per 100 grams mind you you wouldn't want to eat 100 grams of <laughs> nutritional yeast seriously nutritional yeast tastes like cheese the cool kids call it nooch i don't i'm not cool it's something so simple so good so cooking has become awesome i guess the one thing that frustrates me the most is when somebody goes oh i can't eat that it's disgusting i had it once and it was gross Meanwhile, you've been food poisoned how many times and you still go back to the same restaurant or eat the same type of food? 
blows my mind. Next, number five, B12. Uh, we found out that B12 was a supplement and well, that became a part of our lives. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit harder to get, but nutritional yeast in pretty much every meal, phenomenal. It's kind of like adding cheddar to it, but not. Then, uh, <laughs> so that B12 was, was added in and that's been fantastically in every part of our meal, including chia seed for our omega threes, walnuts, which I've been munching on this whole time. But the ironic thing is we never got B12 deficient. Also finding the right vegans to watch too. That helped. That's something else that I wish we knew earlier. Stop making things complicated. That's another thing I wish we knew before. So bonuses. Number six, becoming an encyclopedia of knowledge. Having to find out about every aspect of nutrition. It drove me nuts. I had read a lot of papers as well as uh, PubMed, uh, Mayo Clinic papers and just kept reading them. I was reading papers almost every night, three or four papers, sometimes five or six. And if I was feeling real dirty, I'd read the bad papers. I found out a lot about it stuff. Like for example, how much bias is in uh, meat and dairy? It's pretty insane. You should see dairy is scary. I had to go to the sources to find out all things vegan. One thing I didn't want to do was go down that rabbit hole. And unfortunately I went down that rabbit hole pretty far. Stop making things complicated. That's my, my wealth of knowledge right there. Keep it balanced, simple. If you can't say the words, don't eat it. All right, does that make logical sense? Good. Last, second last, turning into a broken record. At first it was frustrating answering the same questions over and over and over and over and over and over and over. To the point where it's like, what's your question now? Where do you get your proteins from, broski? Um, look, man, I, I just eat grass all day. You know, some hay from time to time. Having them walk away and like, yes! I knew it! It's so fun. The last one that I want to talk about is protein. And when we first went vegan, I, I swear, <sighs> true story. I used to make fun of vegans all the time. And I'm like asking them the same questions, hence the broken record things. Where do you get your proteins, bro? Where do you get your nutrients from? And then that's when I had that real realization of, oh, crap. Anyways, now we're here, seven years later. Protein is surprisingly abundant and it is everywhere, all foods, vegetables, fruit, and as well as beans, legumes, and all that good stuff. Nuts. There's no shortage of it. You reach all of your amino acids. Again, chronometer. Type in any vegetable, any fruit, and put in 100 grams. See how much you get, okay? It's surprising. All right, thanks guys for watching. Like and subscribe. Have yourself a great day. And uh, have yourself a fantastic, wonderful, superb kind of day because I know I have. All right, have a good one. Bye for now.